Hello. So let's talk about um, what we've got going on here. So we're we're going to add a second VCA, and this is you know not required. If you're just starting your rec, you can get away with you know one four channel VCA or even a two channel VCA at first. But eventually, you might add another one. And I'm just going to show you why you may want to. Um, first, some advanced thoughts about what a VCA can do. Um, people always say. Um, you can never have enough VCAs. Um, it's becoming less of a thing because so many attenuated in, uh, attenuators are built into modules now. So, for example, you know, there I have FM. I have a knob for how much FM. Um, same thing with pulse width modula modulation. Um, but if you want to th think about, you know, how we would do that in a sort of a pre-fancy module environment, VCA is what gives you the control. Because remember, this is what shape. The oscillators are what shape. VCAs are how much. Okay? So, for example, if I wanted to... Got my sound there. What if I wanted to add pulse width modulation to this? Um, you know, we can do, like, hey, sine wave, pulse width modulation. I've got an attenuator right there. So... I can say how much with the attenuator. What if we, you know, wanted to push it a little further? Um, so what I've discovered is that my particular VCAs electrically have a little bit more to give. Um, so it's it can sort of exceed the value of this knob. Uh, so what we can do is... So what I've done is I'm taking the sine wave out of my second oscillator, going into channel 2, going out of channel 2, back into pulse width modulation, and this second knob gives me how much. So here's our sound. So it's pretty cool. Um, you can hear that that's not quite the same as what we can do with the onboard attenuator knob. So there is some advantage to using VCAs in this way. <laughs> if I could plug things in right. There we go. Some people also just like the convenience of having their knobs sort of closer together, I guess. Um, same thing happens with, like, FM. Um, so I can go sine wave to FM, right? You know, that gives me one kind of sound. I can go sine wave to VCA, back to the FM input, and that gives me a different kind of sound. So, what shape, how much? If you only get one thing from the last two videos, what shape, how much? Okay. Now, two VCAs. I have the ability for this VCA to be a mixer because I have a summing output. Um, so I got to thinking about, you know, if we're doing what shape out of this one, I can do stuff like take a pulse width, or sorry, a pulse wave, Go into channel one. Then I can take a sine wave and go into channel two. Now remember, we're saying how much, right? So we can take the mix output and go into our CV input here. So the last video, you know, we were just going like square wave straight to here. Now we're introducing an intermediate step. So this is functioning as a voltage mixer at this point because this is too low to here. There's our square wave.
how much. So I'm saying how much sine wave, how much pulse uh, wave is affecting the volume of the signal. And for good measure, we can take our triangle wave and go back into pulse wave modulation. Which is pretty cool. And, you know, if you go heavy reverb from a guitar pedal, now we have something pretty cool and useful. So I've just introduced like a lot of variation from very few modules, four modules, and we've got all that coming out of it. And forget about, like, we haven't even changed pitch yet, right? <laughs> and we haven't even experimented with other waves, so let's try saw. gives you some ideas to play with.